Hey everybody, it's Michael Skelton here. It's been a while since I've reviewed a board game and that is some of my most popular stuff. So I'm going to do a new one today. It is called Ingenious by Reiner Knizia. Uh, he's a very prolific game designer. If I had to guess, I'd say he's probably designed over 100 games, um, at least somewhere around that. And the rules are very simple and uh, because of that I think it's pretty fun. It's one to four players, so it is possible to play it solitaire, although it's not quite as enjoyable that way. But uh, I'm going to go over the rules real quick and show an example play. So let's get started. So here's the board all laid out. Um, I'm trying to cram it into the shot. It's, it's kind of big. And you'll notice we got a big white area in the middle, and that's if you're only playing with two players. The gray area is if you're playing with three players, and the black area is with four. So uh, the board gets bigger with the more players you have, which makes sense. Then you got all these starting positions. The main thing that these are for is that in the beginning, everyone everyone's first piece has to play, be played adjacent to a different starting position. So if I played over here, you couldn't play over there yet. But after the first turn, the whole board is fair game. <clears throat> and uh, okay, so then everyone after the board set up everyone gets one of these a, um, a scoring marker scoring board and Let me hold it up here. It's got all the different um, Symbols that's used in the game down the left side and then it's got a track from 1 to 18 and <clears throat> when you uh, Place pieces you're going to score and keep track of how many of each different symbol you're getting. So you're going to place a little scoring marker <clears throat> um, on each symbol and at the zero position. La dee da. Okay, now also everyone takes a uh, rack. So a rack is just like this. This is where you'll be uh, storing all your domino-like pieces, <clears throat> all the playing pieces. And then everyone starts out with six pieces. So from this big old bag, you're going to draw six, not showing anybody. And put them on your rack. Like so. And notice each piece has two of the um, six different symbols on it. Once everyone has a scoring board and a rack in front of them, I'm just uh, using the rack right there so you can see it. Normally you'd put it behind your scoring board. Once everyone has a rack and a scoring board in front of them, the game begins. Everyone gets one turn, goes around clockwise, youngest person goes first. Uh, the game ends when no more pieces can be played on the board or when somebody gets 18 score for every single different symbol, which is very rare. Okay, so how do you play and how do you score? That's the next question. I'm going to show that right now. Okay, so I've got an example situation set up here as if we're in the middle of a game. And I'm assuming we're playing two players, so we're restrict restricted to only the white area of the board. Now what you do on your turn is you get to take any of the six tiles that you have on your rack and play one on the board anywhere you want. Um, let's say we play this piece. So it's got blue on one side and green on the other. <clears throat> now where do you want to play it? You want to play it so that it's uh, surrounded by as many colored pieces, light colored pieces as possible. So. Let's say you're playing it right here. So this is the piece you're playing. Um, it's got green on one side, blue on the other. Let's score, and you score each side separately. So let's score green side first. Um, you gotta find, notice the green side is adjacent to five different directions. So we got one, two, three, four, five other spaces around it, and the one that's attached to it. Um, you score points for each line radiating outward from it that has the same color as that side. So we're looking for green that's uh, radiating outward from it. So right here we've got one green space followed by blanks. Right here we've got one green space followed by a blue which blocks it from getting any bigger. 
and then we've got three blank spaces. So that would be a total of one, two green points. And you would move your score marker up to two. <clears throat> now the blue is a little trickier. It's surrounded by three, well, two green sides, so those don't count, and the side that um, is attached to it, which always doesn't count. And then we've got three directions of blue. So this direction has one blue space and then it uh, is open. This direction has one blue space and then it's blocked by this yellow one. And then this direction has one blue space and it's open. So you would get a total of one, two, three blue points for that. And you can move your marker up to three. Then you would uh, draw another tile to replace the one you just played and it would be the next person's turn. So this is the next person's scoreboard. They haven't got any points. And um, let's say they're gonna play the same piece. It's got green on one side, blue on the other. Now this time, they've got a much uh, more attractive option for where to play it. Well, they've got a couple different choices, but given what I see, I think you might as well play it somewhere, say, like here. Then, what do you score for green? Well, it's adjacent to three blank, one that's not the same color, and one that is. So we get one green point. Now, the blue, however, adjacent to four blank and one line radiating outward. Now, this time it's not just one. It's one, two, three blue stars radiating outward from it. So they would get three blue points for that. Then they would draw uh, another tile to replace that one, and it would be the next person's turn. Now one thing to note is that there are double tile pieces. So this is a uh, double green, and <clears throat> they score just like the other pieces, but you got to remember not to count the other side of the piece you're placing. So if you put it here to score this side, it's adjacent to four blank and one green of one piece. So you would get one green point. You don't count the other side of the same piece you're placing. <clears throat> so you just get one point for that. Also, this green side, uh, even though you already scored for this piece due to this side, you get to score that side again, or that piece again for this side. So this side, when it's scoring, it's adjacent to two blank, one green, one green, and two green in that line. So you get a total of four green points for that. Which, so, in reality, you've got two points for that one piece right there, because each side, being the same color, is adjacent to it. <clears throat> uh, not as confusing as you might think. So after you played for a while, maybe your scoreboard looks something like this. Um, and uh, so you're doing pretty good on a couple of these colors here, not so good on a couple others. Now. One rule I forgot to mention is that if you ever hit 18 on a color, you get to call out Ingenious and take another turn before you refresh your pieces. So you play your uh, one out of your six pieces, you score 18 for red, let's say, and then you call out Ingenious, play another one of those five pieces you have left. You might even get another Ingenious and then um, take another turn until... Uh, you don't until your turn just ends like normal. Then you get to refresh back up to six and it's the next person's turn. Also, a rule is if you ever don't have any tiles with the color that you're lowest in, in this case purple, um, after you play your piece and before you refresh, you would show everyone that you don't have purple. Set those tiles aside and um, draw six new tiles. And you're stuck with those till the next turn. Now, why so many colors, you're probably asking yourself. What's the point? Why don't I just concentrate on these and leave these colors behind? Well, the re reason is there's a little twist at the end, and that twist is your final score is the lowest of all your colored scores. So even though you're doing good on these four colors over here, because you didn't play any purple, your score is zero at the end of the game if, if this is what your scoreboard looked like. Now this adds a nice little aspect of it where for a while you're going to be trying to play as many purple pieces as possible and then once you get up there you're no longer going to be uh, concentrating on that color so much. You're going to want to get orange up there so you don't leave it too far behind. And um, I think this rule 
which Reiner has used in a couple of his games, um, adds a lot of depth to it that normally might might not be there otherwise. So I like that, and uh, that that little twist is what makes the whole game. I would say. So don't forget about your least uh, your your lesser colors. You always got to concentrate on. So that's how you play Ingenious. Uh, if you like this video, or even if you didn't, please comment and rate it down below. That way I know what works and what doesn't. And in future videos, I can try and tailor it more to uh, what people like. Um, <clears throat> also, be sure and check out uh, my favorite website, www.wiseoz.com. That's where you can win prizes for answering questions and trivia. All right, Michael Skeleton, out.